today I'm unboxing and testing out the Monoprice Select Mini 3D Printer version 2. I bought this on Amazon with the goal of sorting out if, with how far 3D printing technology has come, if now possibly a low price point printer can hold its own and produce quality results. This was $220 on Amazon, comes in nice and fast with prime shipping. And the packaging is excellent. There's this nice formed foam to keep everything protected and then double boxed for shipping. So I've got instruction booklet here. I need to read through this. I've got a little scraper. I'm not really sure how useful that looks. I've got the different parts for the power cable. Uh, something that goes probably on the side here. I'll get that out in a minute. SD card with hex key filament and then the printer itself it comes with the little tape here to keep I guess everything stable through shipping we've got a little screen cover and it's a uh, feels really well made it's heavy I'm setting this up on a sturdy countertop so it's not going to wobble around at all then I've just got to take off that last piece of packaging this piece of tape was wrapped around pretty well and stuck on so it took a little work to get it off carefully and then we got to attach that spool holder onto the side Again, it was a little bit challenging to get it fitted on there, but it's in place now so we can go ahead and plug everything in and power this thing up. We also need to insert the SD card, which is preloaded with a test print. The nozzle needs to be preheated so we can insert the filament. So we've got to go to monitor and heat up the extruder. We're going to heat it up to 195 or so, and we're going to be inserting first the sample PLA that comes with the printer. Now this menu, it kind of looks like a touch screen, but it's not. You just have to use the dial for everything. So it's pretty, but not quite as functional as you might think looking at it. There's a little bit of a burning smell. I see a little bit of smoky something. Hopefully that's okay. So I targeted it to 195, but it way overshot to 212. I think the smell went away now, so it must have just been an initial thing. I'm gonna grab a little sample filament that came with it. Just trim a little point on that. This little tip now. Okay, that went in fine, easy enough. We need to move some material through, so we're going to go to move and choose the E option for extrude. From here we can move that material further up or back it out by scrolling towards down if you need to remove the material. Here we want to just go ahead and get some filament. There we go. So that's working just fine. Now we're going to go to print. I'm going to do this cat G code, which is their test. So their test lines look straight like they're supposed to, but I don't think the bed's actually level because it was popping up over here. Since the instruction manual was pretty sketchy on the bed leveling process, I went and watched the Monoprice video as to how you're supposed to do it, and from there learned that as long as you turn off the machine, then you're free to move the extruder and the bed so as to check the leveling in various places. I'm gonna just start off this corner. Go ahead and adjust that a little at a time. I'm going to move on over and adjust this corner. It's kind of a pain. Let's go ahead and move over to this corner now. All right, I'll come back around and check again in a second. I'm going to do finally the front now. We've got nothing there, so we're going to loosen this guy. Okay, we'll try that. So it's talking about yellow tape, there's no Kapton, this looks like a build tack type product on here, so I just cleaned it with a little bit of alcohol to get rid of any fingerprint residues. Now it's nice and clean, I'm going to try it one more time. Cat. That's got to heat up all over again now. Oh, and yeah, I guess I turned on the build plate. Didn't mean to turn that on. Oops. 
course, be uh, quite stuck on now. Didn't have quite enough filament to finish because I canceled that first one. It was to the last little bit here for the ear. Still stuck on well. There's still some heat going on with the bill plate. Yeah, so it never actually really went below 40, I think, while it was printing, even though I was set to 30, so I guess it isn't super exact in that way. Uh, I need to go ahead and uh, take out that last little bit of filament there. It's down to the very end. So we're hot enough now to remove the filament. I'm gonna go to move the and you want to take it back. So just send it all the way out. And then for the last bit of it, we'll just squeeze this and pull out the tail. Be ready to load something new. Let's pause right there for a moment. As I said, I purchased this on Amazon and I used the handy comparison chart that's right on the listing here. It says that the nozzle can go up to 260, which is perfect. That's the same as the Ultimaker and that covers all the filaments I typically work with. Later, I checked on the Monoprice website, which says that it's only rated up to 230, which is not good enough and I wouldn't have purchased it if it were rated to 230. So we're just gonna continue with the rest of the test based on the documentation that's on the listing where this was purchased and we'll just see how it turns out. I had some semi-flex that I was using for my 3D pen, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that for the next test. I've got that loaded into the printer now. I do still need to set up this machine in my Cura, so I'm gonna follow the prompts for adding a new machine and then set up the correct bed size for that. It's gonna be 120 by 120 by 120. And we'll switch over that nozzle size because it's a 0.4 nozzle and select that it does have a heated bed. So now we'll be able to select that profile in Cura and everything will be set up properly. We're going to get a baseline set by choosing the profile of the G-code for the sample print. And then from there, just modify that for the print that I want to try. That's my own model. I'm going to first try a fox head medallion. So for this, I'm going to slow it down first of all. The cap was at 40 millimeters per second, so I'm going to try at 25 and see if that works. I don't need any bed temperature because the flexible filaments do stick so well. And then I also need to turn up the temperature a little bit. We're going to just start at 230 and see if that will work. But normally I would print this more at 245. So this is... The semi flex. It is able to push it through there once you slow it down and turn the heat up high enough. Seems to be working okay. The heat's at 245 ish. And I've got it at 20 millimeters per second speed. I'm not sure if that's really better than the last one. I guess we'll see what the top layer looks like. The front surface came out fairly comparable to the first test here. The back is a little bit better. It's a bit smoother, a little bit more mashed into the build plate, even though really it should be on print bite for doing that. This one had you know more gaps here. So the increased heat did help that, but towards the center here, you can see that it's sort of I don't know if it was just too hot for this particular filament. I think it was just under extruding. So it just couldn't push enough through. And then I noticed that was happening. So I kind of just manually adjusted the filament, pushed a little bit extra through. And from there, it did look a little bit better. And it was able to finish here at the top pretty nicely. It's fairly smooth, but you can still see these kind of uneven marks here where it's a little bit under extruded in some areas. So it still just seems to not be quite extruding properly. So I'm hoping that uh, cheetah for this will end up coming out better, but I want to try a different model also just to make sure that it's not this particular model that's the only thing it's having trouble with. So we're going to try something else. Looks like it's coming out pretty well. It's like a mini version of the Witch King Bracer. Some little strings in there, nothing major. I'm not seeing any sort of errors here. There's no infill, so it's just doing a couple of perimeters. It's very slow. It's only at 30 millimeters per second. It's looking pretty good. Curious to try this with cheetah. 
versus the semi gloves. I know I've gotten better results with the cheetah for these types of things. The mini bracer turned out very nicely. It's captured the detail quite well with that 0.4 nozzle. I'm not seeing any terrible flaws here. Towards the bottom here, on the first layer, it wasn't extruding quite enough and it didn't quite connect the two walls, but it's still finished nicely. And the great thing about the flexible filaments, I mean, this is almost like a fabric. You can just squish it and it pops right back. So it's great for wearable items, such as this could be. The layers appear to be ever so slightly under extruded, but it's really a workable piece still. You can also potentially sand it a little bit if you want it a little smoother or it's got kind of a built-in sort of distressed look. So it's an interesting result and I'm curious to see if Cheetah behaves in the same way. This is Cheetah. That layer is looking quite good now. It started out nicely and then about halfway through I checked it again and it was starting to get all the little bubbly, uneven, under extruded parts. So I pushed a little extra filament through to help the extruder out, get some more flowing, and now it's flowing fine again. So I still have retraction, and I'm wondering if retraction might be causing the flow to kind of get a little bit behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and try another one and turn off retraction. Turning off retraction didn't end up making a difference for this. It didn't really change anything at all. But I did try every different setting I could think of to get the best result possible. The main thing was just increasing the flow a little bit and then decreasing the speed and finding the best balance of speed versus flow rate in order for the extruder to push enough through without it just building up and starting to kind of bend and come out the top of the extruder and not go in at all. It's usable, but it is a little bit rough on top. This one that I would consider probably the best one, and the back is nice and smooth, although really just switching to print by it would allow that. I want to just compare that here, though, to one that was done on the Ultimaker. This was with a .6 nozzle, though, so it's a little bit different, but still, I couldn't ever get this look, the nice filled in but still smooth look, and then, of course, it's flat on the back because of the print bite. So I couldn't ever achieve that look with this, and I'm not entirely sure why, but I think it's pretty much just related to the ability to push through enough. With it being 1.75 millimeter filament instead of three millimeter, it's a lot more difficult to push that through the nozzle, and it's also a smaller nozzle that was used for this. So though this is pretty decent, um, it's just very, very slow in order to get a good result with the flexible filament. All right, so I'm doing cheetah. I'm trying a large test just to do one final project here. I noticed that it was having trouble pulling the filament, the roll. I mean, it spins fine, but it's a really uh, fine balance here as to whether it's gonna be able to extrude this or not. So I've just kind of been pulling out a little extra there so it doesn't have to pull it off the spool. You see, it's doing pretty well. I would have preferred a little more extrusion, but this is about all that this uh, extruder can handle with regards to the flexible filament at the 1.75 millimeter size that this printer takes. When the print finishes, it ends up on this screen, lets you know how long the print ended up taking. And so that one took almost 22 hours to do this. It had to go so slowly just because of the flexible filament. Let me just go back home, we're back to our main screen. This, of course, is stuck really well because these flexible filaments stick extremely overly well to this BuildTac type surface. Let's see if we can just squeeze it to get it off. There we go. I mean, it's definitely well bonded. See, the top is closed, so it did finish off well enough. And it's uneven because that's part of the model. The bottom, I had to cut off the bottom a little bit to give it enough of a surface to uh, stick on the bed. So it's a little bit more flat here and then just kind of a little bit of the unevenness left there from the model. But I did fill it in well enough. So this level of extrusion, I believe it was 130% or something like that. I'll have to double check. Uh, did do a good job of filling everything in. It's not perfectly smooth. I would have liked it to extrude a little more, but this is, I think, the max of what this uh, stock extruder on the Monoprice could handle without running into issues and having to push it through manually like with the other stuff. So, did these details really nicely. Let's see if I can get this on. Hey, it fits. That works. I mean, it could be cool, I guess. 
in some sort of context. I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna switch over now to a rigid filament. We're gonna try some Tech D by Tolman. With the flexible filament, the bed leveling was really not an issue because it sticks so well. But with this filament, it's a little, a little bit more finicky. The settings here, it's around 55 for the bed, 245-ish for the extruder. And I've got it at 50 speed right now. I just wanna see how it does with that. I was doing the flexible filament all the way down to I think 15 or 20 millimeters per second because I was having to tell it to push through so much and it still was under extruding. Um, we shouldn't have this problem with this filament because it's rigid. So this should be pulling through just fine. I'm trying to keep an eye and make sure it's able to pull this roll. I'm not sure that the stock rack here for the filament is really the best. It's kind of got some sharp edges on it, so I'm not sure if it's going to be able to rotate this okay, but we'll see. Worst case, I can put something on there to make it roll easier. There is a lot of stringing on the inside and on the outside, and then that's causing these little bits of burn stuff because it gunks up the nozzle and then falls off eventually. Also, the strings are catching on the underside of the nozzle, so the insulation there is now all gunked up and I think making the problem even worse. When you compare that back to the little cat that printed in the PLA, I mean, it, it's a lot worse. I'm not at all happy with this print. I'm gonna be trying it again. For these particular settings, I messed with every possible setting that you're able to adjust uh, while it's printing. You can't change the extrusion level on this printer during the print. It has to be set uh, from in the G-code. There is all sorts of little knobbly bits sticking out. There's a bunch of hairs inside, which the uh, cheetah filament did leave little hairs, but they came out really easily and they were only on the inside and they didn't cause anything messy anywhere else. But this is, you can see there's little bits all over the place. It was just shedding the whole time. There was different speed changes in here and temperature changes, temperature and speed change. And it really, there's no definable line other than here where I just sped it up really fast because I just wanted to finish it. Since I was not having a whole lot of luck with the mini bracer on Tech G, I decided to go ahead and print the test cat that worked so well in the PLA that came with the printer. And magically, it seems like everything is working pretty well. So, I mean, I'm gonna let it go further just to see if the actual print part beyond just the raft continues to perform this well. And if so, then I would say that there's something going on with my settings, perhaps in my Cura, and I need to go ahead and just start over with this profile and update it from there. This turned out to be quite interesting testing the cat with the Tech G. It was looking really great, comparable to the PLA printed one. Up here at the ears, the filament got jammed and I wasn't watching it for the last couple minutes of the print, but I heard a funny noise, came over here and checked, and it was just kind of trying to print in the air, no filament coming out. And then I pulled out the filament to check what it looks like here, and the extruder flattened it out in the process of just trying to push it through. So for whatever reason, at the nozzle end there, it, uh, it stopped going through. So then the extruder was just scraping at the filament, trying its best, and couldn't get it through. I don't know what is causing that to happen. It's not the first one that I had flattened out. I had another piece over here where it, uh, it did the same thing. Yeah, right in here, it's flattened out, and I thought maybe that was just a fluke. I had, maybe it had tangled or something, but there was nothing wrong with it on the, on the spool side here. It's turning fine, so not really sure what's up with that. But the good news is that uh, these settings were good, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start over with my profile with these settings and modify it from there and see if I can get better results on this guy again. Unfortunately, it's not looking too much better just yet. I'm gonna give it a while longer. Also, I don't know what's going on there. This uh, indicator for the temperature on the platform, it's flashing 999. It was doing that before and now it's doing it again. I'm not really sure what's causing that, if it's some sort of glitch. The changes using the CAT G-code settings, it made no difference. This one is no better than the first one and it's still full of strings. It still has little blobbies on it and it was still gumming up the extruder and the insulation. The nicest part of this print is, unfortunately, the raft. I finally have a nice looking version of this file printing. 
I got an idea of what settings to change by doing a test of the same file on the Ultimaker. For this, I didn't change the nozzle, it was still a 0.6 nozzle, but I set it to 0.4 nozzle size and then just adjusted the flow a little bit up by 10%. This printed out quite nicely compared to the previous tests on this machine. But I had the cooling fan off, so that eliminated the cooling fans as the issue as to why these were getting so stringy and whatnot. So for this test, I used some of those same settings. I limited it to two walls, so with a 0.4 nozzle, it's doing two walls on each side here. Um, with this one, it's a little bit thicker because there was still a 0.6 nozzle on there, but the idea is the same. There is also no infill, and I changed the retraction settings just a little bit. I'm not sure if that made a difference or not, and then just also slowed things down. Other than that, the settings are pretty much similar here. I'm doing it at 245 still. The extruder here seems to be holding up. I'm not noticing any further damage to the insulation at this point. Uh, and also since there's not stringing, there's not more material getting stuck onto it, causing it to sag further. I'm slowly working my way up on the speed. It's at 0.7 right now, and that's of 30 millimeters per second. The issue that I would potentially have here is if the extruder is pushing through more material, then it can get through that little 0.4 nozzle um, at this heat setting and whatnot. I do also have the flow rate on this turned up to 120% because I was hoping that would eliminate all these spots on this that are somewhat due to the file by adding a little extra material it's filling in those gaps and then that's also helping to prevent the stringing seems to be doing the trick here it's just a matter of whether the nozzle and extruder combination at this temperature and whatnot can handle that flow and that's why I am adjusting the speed slowly so as not to ruin it and so I can just have a nice little testing tower here I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this thing right now. Uh, I canceled this print so I could try a different print since this one was working well and I want to try those same settings on a different file. And so I was trying to turn it off and I, I go to exit. It's, it's obviously not printing anything on the bed here. Um, Okay, now it's soft when I go to print. So I don't know what it thought it was printing, but this thing is getting pretty glitchy. Oops. Let's see, we gotta cancel. And it's doing it again. So it seems to be, it's getting really confused if you start a print and then you cancel it. I, I, I don't know, man. So let's try canceling this one again. But that's not, Canceling. What are you doing? I think I'm just going to turn this off. Let me make sure that the... Okay, well... Yeah, this... Okay. I'm gonna see if I can home the head now that I've turned it off and on again. Okay, good. Well, at least you still know how to do that. Alright, everything seems normal again. Now this was saying 999 and wouldn't heat. Turn it off and on again. Didn't fix it. Turned it off and on again. Did fix it. So... Glitchy. Six hours and 20 minutes later, it's done and it looks pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and switch off the machine so I can go ahead and pull the build plate forward to access the print. There's, there was, I guess, a little bit of a burnt blob got in here, but that's not a big deal. This had a lot of trouble sticking to the build plate because it wouldn't heat up at first. It was doing the all nines instead of build plate temp and then it finally did start heating up so part of the brim did stick and it was enough to keep the piece down let's go ahead and get, see if we can get that to release now despite how much issue it had sticking over in this area for some reason right here it stuck really well and actually ripped out a little piece of this build surface which is not too much of a concern because i was planning on replacing it with print bite anyways the print itself is nice it's sturdy this is 100 percent infill and i believe i did it at 0.1 layer height uh, there's just the normal little bit of extra here, same as I would have gotten pretty much on uh, any, any other printer, just as it's switching back here. This is a usable piece, and size-wise, uh, I could actually probably <laughs> make something that would fit my hand on this. If you were making something for a larger size, obviously you'd need to do the rest of the pieces for this gauntlet in two pieces, but <laughs> it's pretty decent. It's a, it's a workable size. I changed the setting for the first layer in the slicer to 10 millimeters per second, so it's going a little slower on that layer, giving it a little more chance 
to lay down neatly and stick and not stick to the nozzle instead. The very first part here I had to trim off a little bit that was not sticking to the bed, it was sticking to the nozzle and causing the whole thing not to stick. Once I got rid of that and held it down for a moment, it was able to go ahead and lay down that first layer of the brim and now from there it's actually looking quite nice. I did also change the bed leveling a little bit and made it just a little bit further away from the nozzle than I'm used to because I'm so used to working with print bite and I think in the end that is actually working quite well now that it is leveled nicely. This spot where it took a chunk out, I think there was a little bit of a bubble there. I think that's what happened. It did seem like there was a bit of a high spot or it was just that it was not leveled quite right, but it's fine. I've just arranged my piece to not use that spot. This print started out at 30 millimeters per second and it was doing well, so I was gradually increasing the speed. I got up to 45 millimeters per second and it started having some issues there, just not doing a good quality print, so I turned it back to just 30 millimeters per second. It was great, I left it overnight and it seemed to be fine until at some point it stopped extruding and I checked the filament there, it just completely flattened that out so it just ground right through. And unfortunately, you know, you cut this long print here and it fails right at the end, that's pretty frustrating. I will say that the heated bed did a great job. It was still flashing all nines, but it did keep the bed heated up to a full uh, 60 degrees. So it's stayed well stuck. So I'm pleased with that. There wasn't any warping, but it, it stopped working here. So that is unfortunate. <laughs> Otherwise it was looking to be a pretty decent piece. And you can kind of see here where the support structure was looking nice and then slightly further up, it starts looking all under extruded so I'm assuming that's where it started having issues pushing it through. I'm not sure if possibly there was some sort of inconsistency in the temperature of the nozzle. I don't know why it would be working for 14 hours or so and then suddenly decide to grind through the filament. I mean it's loose here there's not any sort of twisting in the roll so that's a bit of a mystery but it was a unfortunate sad day. I had to do this on 0.2 speed. The faster speed with this layer height and whatnot was bunching up the filament. So this is just the world's slowest cat, just testing out the flexible filament with this, just for comparison purposes. So I used just the file that was already on there and modified it and put the temperature at 230, 0.2 speed, and this is set to 40 speed, so 0.2 of 40. And uh, it's working. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can actually stand to sit there and wait for this if they actually need the print at this speed. The cheetah cat has finished and it only took 11 hours and 17 minutes. So it is possible to print with 0.2 layer height at 230 nozzle temp. It just takes a really, really, really long time because otherwise the filament right here in the extruder it starts coming up in a loop and not going through. It just, it can't push it through fast enough with that thin little filament there and the nozzle not being super hot. So oh, I finally have a finished cat. Let's see how this comes off. Okay, not bad. Came right off of the, that's very interesting actually. It came right off of this raft. No difficulty separating whatsoever. Nice raft, nice bottom of the kitty. So that was actually quite successful. Now you have the most durable cat that you will ever meet. I would say that it has at least 10 lives. Of course, the nice thing about this printer is that it does come fully assembled and calibrated and at an affordable price point. Now, when I was setting this up, I noticed that the pictures in the instruction manual didn't match the way that the menus looked on the printer that I received. So I don't know if there's some sort of different versions here that maybe I got an older version or something or that's maybe the manual hasn't been updated recently enough. Now it does do a decent job with the flexible filaments as long as you go nice and slow and that bed does heat up really nicely and it does stay hot for the duration of a long print. I didn't have any trouble with it not holding that heat uh, other than the times when it glitched and it wouldn't turn on for a little bit and I had to turn it off and on and whatnot. So I did encounter some glitches like that with the menus and then uh, with when I canceled that print it did that weird thing so I'm not sure what's going on there. Also, there was that issue with the extruder flattening out the filament and that was with the rigid filament, the Tech G. So I'm not sure again if maybe that could be fixed at least to some extent by changing slicer settings, maybe adjusting the attraction or something, that's a possibility. 
The main thing here though for me is just that according to the Monoprice website, it's saying it's only rated up to 230 for that extruder and I do need it to go higher than that. And of course, you know, with these tests, it did work at a higher temperature, but I'm not sure what sort of long-term damage that could be doing. Uh, but like I said, Amazon said 260, that's what I saw when I bought it. So I just went ahead with that with the tests and it seems to have done pretty well. Now it's not a big issue if you're primarily printing in PLA or low temp type filaments. When you actually adjust the temperature manually on the printer using the dial, it goes up to 250. So I'm not sure what's going on there with that.